Hey guys, this is Artem from Android Police, and I'm here at the NVIDIA's automotive booth at GTC uh, with uh, David Anderson from NVIDIA. And we're looking at uh, some next, next generation technologies here that NVIDIA is uh, trying to put into as many cars as possible uh, in the US and abroad. And uh, the system we're looking at here is uh, actually running Android um, over there, and it can be controlled using a, this is a Nexus 7 over here, controlled using Android, uh, uh, using Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Um, so David, why don't you tell us a little bit more about this technology, um, what it means right now, and what it means for the future, and uh, what can we expect? Sure, absolutely, so I'd be happy to. So uh, what you're looking at is, is actually what you kind of alluded to earlier. So this is actually a production uh, Nexus 7 tablet, and I can pull it out of the docking station okay. here uh, just so you can actually see that that is truly a, a production tablet. Um, it's running uh, our Tegra 3 application processor. Um, on that we have uh, Android as you did mention, and then what we've done here is we've created a simple application that allows us to basically do vehicle control from this device. Because the thought is, is that we're all walking around with these nice you know, tablets and other smartphones. Wouldn't it be great if those could be fully interactive with our vehicle? Not only from a control perspective, but also from a multimedia perspective. So what we're talking about here for not only uh, this example, but also for the future, is being able to use these devices to then pass content into the vehicle, receive content from the vehicle, and kind of take that as you know the evolution of how our vehicles might become more personalized by our broad-end devices. So with that, maybe I'll take you through just a few of the buttons here. We've got a really nice uh, user interface that's all been worked out here. And we have a series of different buttons that if I push, for example, this, uh, this music control, then we'll see the audio screen be reflected uh, up here on the vehicle. Um, and then again, as we mentioned, um, this is actually, again, Taker 3 um, within the vehicle. Um, and then that's also running Android as well. So we have two instances uh, of Android. Uh, here in the vehicle. So we'll just take you through a few of the other nice uh, icons here. We have an icon for climate control, icon for battery management. This is an application that was intended kind of to be a proof of concept for uh, uh, electric vehicles. Looking at statistics in terms of your overall performance. And then also other diagnostic information that might be pertinent to, to the functionality of the vehicle. So, in essence, this is, this is a concept, uh, you know, for, a, a, again, the broad-end devices uh, within the vehicle. Uh, we're working on a number of different other strategies, also kind of employing similar kinds of advanced concepts, and maybe I'll take you down to another example here. Um, this is something that we call our reconfigurable cluster, and basically what this is, is that this is a wide-format TFT, um, has a nice HMI model that's running on it now, but our idea is that it'd be really wonderful if you could take the same platform and simply reskin the overall look and feel of that particular platform. So here we have a series of different examples, graphic examples, that could then take on functionality uh, within your vehicle. And this would allow the OEMs to basically uh, take the same platform and then stylistically adapt it for whatever brand you know is going to actually use that platform. Um, or hopefully in, in, in the future, maybe there will even be an interactive application that will allow us as, as consumers to actually customize and create our own look and feel and personalization within the vehicle. Um, the other thing I'll point you out, uh, or point out to you here, is we have a series of different embedded applications that can be sub-presentations, if you will, within this overall HMI model. One of the more impressive ones is this uh, Google Assets database um, that's actually being rendered real time here in full 3D, and we're actually doing route calculation through that uh, full 3D city scene on top of drawing all these really, really fine uh, pointer movements uh, in perfect uh, sort of frame rate, if you will. There's, there's no stuttering whatsoever, as you can see. So the other notion that I'll, I'll tell you with, with all this work is that this is really truly uh, agnostic of platforms. So we can take these same HMI models, run them in Android, run them in Linux, or run them even on something like Windows RT. And so that's kind of a good segue down to this, this next example. Um, what we have here, again, is an idea of sort of the car without a car. This is a, a center stack cutaway uh, from a Lincoln vehicle. And um, 
we basically created a new infotainment look and feel for this vehicle. And this is all fully interactive. We have a nice projected capacitive touch panel. And we're showing here different vehicle controls for things like climate controls. This would be where you come in and you set your, your temperature. And again, you can see all very nicely rendered 3D graphics. Again, the importance of trying to take that two-dimensional surface and make it really look like a real true aesthetic material. All fully functional. So this platform, uh, one of the most important <clears throat> things that I took away from this is this platform is uniform and abstract. Uh, and this tablet here, uh, or this screen here, is running Windows RT. Uh, that one over there is running Linux. And the first one was running Android. That's right. So you can pretty much take anything you want and uh, put this NVIDIA layer on top of that. That's right. Uh, um, Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, so the other, the other piece of that sort of uh, strategy is really what we're doing from a hardware perspective. Um, so this uh, that I'm holding here in my hand, this is uh, the NVIDIA Visual Computing Module. Um, this is the strategy behind uh, the automotive uh, uh, market uh, at NVIDIA. And the reason why this is important is that in the center it features here our, our Taker 3 silicon and around it all the supporting circuitry that's necessary to, to run that uh, Taker device, basically creating a fully functional system on a module. But the important thing is not so much that that's one solution, it's the idea that this is a common form factor that as we continue to innovate and advance our silicon, we'll continue to produce and make modules that are form factor equivalent where you can then upgrade your system over a period of time. This means we're basically marrying um, the design cadence, the design philosophy of sort of the consumer electronics world with something that can be used in the automotive market, trying to kind of get more advanced technology in sooner uh, to automotive applications. If this works, that's fantastic. That would be fantastic. Now, how many years um, would you say we are away from seeing this in, in live cars. Um, so we're seeing sort of the, the precursor to a lot of it today. I mean, you see a lot of advanced work ongoing, you know, with our, our friends at Audi and BMW, and even the Tesla vehicle that's here behind me. Um, and I, I would say that a lot of these sort of next next concepts are probably you know five to anywhere between seven to eight years out. Uh, but you know, hypothetically, very very reason or very much realizable uh, in, in the near term, if you will. And you see some of that in the vehicles already. I mean, you're seeing companies like Audi and Tesla adopt fully reconfig reconfigurable dash uh, kinds of concepts already. Um, Tesla has uh, the dash already in production. So that's the idea that I think uh, really is gonna drive a lot of this. Okay, great. Thanks a lot for your time. You're very welcome. All right.